So the talk is about Asian American female never smoker lung cancers, what you should know. Okay. So let's just start off with the case. Okay. 59 year healthy Asian American female. Never smoked. She developed this dry cough over COVID time and it went on for eight months. Finally, she said, okay, it's probably the Sinopril, right? Goes to the PCP. PCP says, yeah, you're right. I want to switch you to something else. But just in case, let me uh, get a chest x ray. You know, maybe it's valley fever. She gets a call a week later with a suspicious nodule. Can you see it? <laughs> Here at the radiology era. It's a, it's a faint cloud. Now, you got to remember the radiologist's office, everything was black, right? Except for that. <laughs> no biopsy, non small cell lung cancer, and the first moment. A total shock and disappointment. All right, so what are my goals today? Well, <clears throat> I would like to just give everyone a quick overview of lung cancer. So we'll quickly focus on the lung cancers and never smokers, okay? And we'll even focus more on the topic of the day. <laughs> lung can cancer in Asian female never smokers. It's a very unique phenomenon that's very little known. And then I'll do a little bit of biogenetics of lung cancer, a little bit of diagnosis and treatment. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then we'll touch on research and resources that's available. All righty. Lung cancer, number one cause of cancer deaths in the world and in the US, even also in China, actually. Uh oh. <clears throat> Revealing all my secrets in here <laughs> that I'm looking at online. Oops. <laughs> Technical difficulties. All right, so we did that. It is the number one cause of uh, cancer deaths in Asian Americans. It is the second most common cancer death in the U.S. In men, it's second to prostate cancer, and it's second to breast in females and women. All right, everybody knows this: number one risk factor of lung cancer is smoking, right? But did you know up to 20% of lung cancers in the US never smoked, never smoked? The definition is less than 10, less than 100 cigarettes a lifetime. I qualify. So uh, the National Institute of Cancer, or Cancer Institute, estimate 236,000 or so new lung cancers will be diagnosed this year. A little bit more than 54% will actually die from it this year. So, a little bit of a detail. There's two main types of lung cancer. 85% are non-small cell lung cancer. And then the rest of the 15% uh, called small cell. A little graphic here for you. Three main histological types of the non-small cell lung cancer, adenocarcinoma, squamous cell, and large cell lung cancer. And a little graphic for you. All right, so we're going to look, look at lung cancer in non-smokers, right? That's like about 20%, right? Up to 20%. Lung cancers in non-smokers almost exclusively non-small cell, and mostly adenocarcinoma, 50, 60% adenocarcinoma. So adenocarcinoma has quite a few very identifiable mutations that you can find on. You can identify on. Um, tissue biopsy, or there's a development of blood biopsy, liquid biopsy, it's not really as reliable as tissue. There are three main mutations for the adenocarcinoma uh, tissue types, EGFR, ALK, and CRAS. It's estimated about a third of uh, non-small cell lung carcinomas have EGFR mutations. Different studies have different values, but Let's take a look at this study. 
Um, so you look at all the females, smoke, um, all the females in the U.S. with lung cancer. Maybe 16% were non-smokers. Okay, but if you look at all the females, Asian females in the U.S. that have lung cancer, 57% are non-smokers. A very disproportionate percentage of non-smokers in the Asian females in the U.S. that have lung cancer. Here's a study from uh, uh, Kaiser um, and Sutton, Sutton, I think, Healthcare. This was just kind of collection of data from about a 14, 13 year period of time. If you are any uh, ethnicity under the AAH, NH, which is Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, right? If you are in any of those categories, the percentage of non-smokers is 43.9%. Look at this. Chinese Americans that have lung cancer, 88% are non-smokers. Filipino Americans, 55%. Japanese American, 31%. Korean American, 31.6%. Pacific Islanders, Japanese American, oops, sorry. So 43 in the, China, in the Chinese is a very high percentage of non-smokers. Pacific Islander is 23. And the native Hawaiian is really actually pretty low. From the same study, we see the incidence of uh, lung cancer in any of the ethnicities, ethnicities under ANHPI, 17 per 100,000. Chinese American females had the highest incidence. Next was Filipino Americans, native Hawaiian, Japanese Americans has the lowest incidence of lung cancer in the lung smokers. This is a chart that makes my brain go fuzzy. But anyway, it's just quickly just to, it's a it's a um, an article from Translational Lung Cancer Research, one of my favorite articles I read all the time. Um, it basically is showing the percentage of smokers and non-smokers in the lung cancer patients based on sex and also what part of the world. So if you look over here, this is the US, right? So the blue is male, the red maroon is female. So if you look, it's 94% of the lung cancer patients are smokers in the US. And this is a little bit higher uh, estimate than I put out earlier, but for women, around the same. But if you look at Look across at all the balloons, all across U.S., Europe, Hong Kong, Asia, right here. The the, ma the percentage of male smokers in the lung cancer are roughly, you know, around the same. But what's striking is the women. The percentage of non-smokers in the women, right? Very striking. So in the U.S., roughly 95% of your female uh, lung cancer patients are smokers. Look at this. 5% of your lung cancer patients, female patients in China, are smokers. Taiwan, that's where I'm from, South Korea, Japan. So really quite a striking difference. This is a study from East Asia. We, we, there's really actually a fair amount of studies out there if you look around, but we, we, we don't have, uh, I mean, we do have a lot of studies from Asia. Um, so roughly 33% of lung cancers in East Asia are non-smokers, that's kind of the estimate. And then nearly uh, exclusively adenocarcinoma, I can talk about that a little bit earlier. Nearly 90% of the uh, lung cancers in non-smokers have well known mutations. So you see that this is the biggest chunk, it's EGFR mutation, and you've got CRAS, AL, CROSS, et cetera, et cetera. So about 90% of your uh, cancers um, in the adenocarcinoma patients have some known uh, known uh, mutations that and you see the 74 big chunk. So what are the contributing factors to lung cancers in non-smokers? Well, nothing proven, but there's a lot of thoughts out there, you know, theories, secondhand smoke, cooking oil, uh, genetic susceptibility, susceptibility, hormonal factors, occupational environmental factors, right, and then previous history of lung cancer. 
So what about this EGFR mutation? Just diving a little bit into it because it's very it's fascinating. So EGFR is a growth factor, uh, growth factor receptor, and it's involved in cell growth. Uh, mutations of this EGFR leads to really unregulated cell growth. Basically, that's the bottom line. Ninety percent of the uh, mutations in EGFR are on. For those of you genetic nerds, genetics nerds, I don't understand this, but it's exon 19 and exon 21, okay? <laughs> and then um, it's really crucial if you do have an EGFR positive cancer to test for biomarkers. And that's part of the revolution in cancer care uh, and knowledge over the past 15 years. Target, targeted therapy is first line for uh, the, uh, uh, the EGFR mutations. And then immunotherapy is not recommended. Apparently, uh, tyrosine kinases uh, um, inhibitors are uh, can be um, can develop resistance. All right. For those of you who are cellular biologists, nerds here, <laughs> this is uh, EGFR, and then this is a receptor, and they come in pairs like this. EGFR endothelial growth factor. This is up the receptor, and then it triggers a process intracellularly, and then you know, it causes growth, I guess. <clears throat> For patients with advanced non small cell lung cancer, and the mutation in the abnormal growth factor receptor, or EGFR, first line treatment is with an EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor and EGFR TKI. All right, so that's kind of the basic way that the EGFR TKIs will uh, stop cancer. All right, this I'll just not come through, but this is um, a Canadian uh, oncologist who explains this really well. So I'm just going to put this here so you can hear it better. Okay, so I tested positive for EGFR lung cancer. What does that mean for me? So. Nobody wants to have lung cancer, but the truth is that if you're going to have lung cancer, each of our positive lung cancer patients have the most hope, I think, of all patients with lung cancer. And so, you know, it's such an exciting time. It means that people with each of our positive lung cancer have a real chance to have targeted therapies, to avoid chemotherapy, and to live longer and to live better lives. Okay, how common is EGFR lung cancer? So it, it varies depending on where you are. We more commonly see it in people who've never smoked. It's more common in Asia, so we, we see it about 60% of people with lung cancer in Asia, and about 15 to 30% of people in North America, really depending on where you live. So in places where um, lung cancer is mostly a never smoker, so California or Toronto or Vancouver, we really see that. Um, whereas in other places where maybe we see a little bit more smoking related lung cancer, the, the chance of GitHub seeing is a little bit more, so 15 to 20 to 30 percent. Okay. Right. All right, let's touch on diagnosis and treatment a little bit. Symptoms, well, there's just so many vague, non specific symptoms cough, fatigue, short of breath, didn't sleep enough. So it's hard, it's hard to really be specific. Okay. <clears throat> but overall, 40% of newly diagnosed um, non-small cell lung cancer is already in the fourth stage, stage four. Smokers, well, there's an actual annual low-dose CT screening that's paid for by insurance. Smokers, okay. Right now, there is no screening recommendation at all for non-smokers, anybody. Having any insurance? Um, what kind of is the definition that insurances go by for per smoker? Yeah, that's a great question. I hope that it's for the people who had less than a hundred <laughs> cigarettes in their lifetimes, but I don't know. I think that's a great question. Okay. Right so, you know, the the folks that are screened or uh, whatever, uh, incidentally found to have a suspicious lesion, then. Biopsy, tissue biopsy is recommended, right? You can use a liquid biopsy. There's several, several companies right now that are developing it. It's supposed to pick up a, uh, basically DNA debris and protein debris from cells, these cancer cells. Uh, they just happen to like 
toss a little EGFR cell in there, in the stream, and you can pick it up. But it's just not really precise, as, as precise as the tissue biopsy. So once um, the cancer is confirmed, then you'll have to send the specimen uh, to get the biomarkers. It's really, really important to direct your care. Because we just talked about all those EGFR uh, specific mutations, right? And there's specific treatment for those. So as I said, no guidelines for screening non-smokers so far. But there's an interesting study last year, Talent from Taiwan. Very Taiwan. <laughs> um, so the study was uh, the study of the utility of screening <coughs> in non-smokers using low-dose CT okay, in Taiwan. So in Taiwan, 53% of the lung cancers are in non-smokers, pretty high. They uh, prospect prospectively uh, enrolled 12,000 patients over a period of five, five years or so. And the result was that they picked up 311 lung cancers, um, confirmed lung cancers, 2.6%. In terms of treatment, it really depends on so many factors, right? Your age, the comorbid conditions, you guys, you guys should understand that now in the biomarkers I've emphasized, right? So if it's found in the early stage, surgery, curative surgery is the first line. Then if it's beyond that, there's usually a combination of radiation, chemo, targeted, immunology, depending on very specifics of that patient. Uh, All right, so all of that is just a lot of book knowledge. Let's bring it down to some uh, in real, real world, okay? This is Patricia Hong. I read about her and found out about her as I was doing research. So she was a US born Asian American of mainland Chinese parents. She was a graduate of UF UC Berkeley, undergraduate studies with honors. She went to UCSF Medical School got her MPH at the same time, I think, <laughs> from UC Berkeley. And then she was accepted for the OBGYN residency at Harbor, UCLA. She was a single mother of two, had already really conquered a lot right then. So in 2017, three days after <coughs> completing her OBGYN residency, she was diagnosed with ALK positive stage four lung cancer, adenocarcinoma. She never smoked. She was 36 when she was diagnosed with the cancer. She lived four more years and she passed away a year ago at age 40. Let that sink in. She never practiced her residency or her, her specialty. Because as soon as she found out, she had to go under treatment. So I hope her story, Trish, at least it is for me, Trish Hong would be a, like a rallying call to us. Okay. There is a couple studies out there that I want to highlight. There's a study called FANS. It's actually two FANS studies, but this one is in California and around the Bay Area. And what they're trying to do is, it, FANS stands for female Asian non-smokers, obviously. But they want to enroll cancer patients as well as not, that follow the female Asian without lung cancer. So the information's up there, and I have it if you, if you want to. There's another fan study it's out in New York City. It's a slightly different study. It's actually, they're offering low dose, free low dose CT scans for screening. So they're, in, they're still enrolling. I was able to get in touch with the principal uh, investigator. Um, I want you guys to hear her. Hey, Pam's up. My name is Elaine Chung, and I'm a thoracic medical oncologist at NYU Langone in New York City. I'm the principal investigator of the Female Asian Non-Smoker Screening Study, which is a lung cancer screening program that is offered to Asian women non-smokers. As many of you may know, lung cancer unfortunately doesn't affect those only who smoke, but it can also affect non-smokers. 
in the United States, about 15 to 20 percent of lung cancers actually happen in non-smokers. In Asian women, this percentage actually appears to be higher. Many of our studies come from Asia and not so much in the United States, but certainly we do see that Asian women non-smokers do have a relatively high incidence of lung cancer. As a result, I developed this study uh, to offer these free low-dose CT scans to Asian women non-smokers. As many of you might know, lung cancer screening in the United States is only offered to smokers. Insurance companies won't cover the lung cancer screening, which is done with a low-dose CT scan of the chest to those who don't smoke. However, I do believe that Asian women are another high-risk population who have an increased risk of developing lung cancer. And so I'm hoping that this study might one day change the guidelines and we can change the narrative of this. Um, interested participants uh, can call 212-731-6212. You can also probably Google us um, and get some more information, but it's totally free for participants to participate. Um, right now, the scans do have to be done here in New York, but we are expanding this study uh, to Southern California and to the Boston area. So we're really excited to do that. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions by email. Um, you can email me at elaine.shum, S-H-U-M, at nyulandphone.org if you have any questions. And um, yeah, thank you so much again for being interested in this study. Thanks. And then um, you may know uh, clinicaltrials.gov has all the studies in the world, <laughs> practically. So you can always search for non-smoker lung cancer. And there's many studies that you can enroll in or have uh, somebody you know would be interested in enrolling in. And I searched for some resources that might be specific for Asian Americans. There are actually aren't a lot, but here's one from, I think this is uh, Maryland. First one is somewhere, <laughs> and the second one, Asian American Health uh, Initiatives, is, is uh, Maryland. And then this is a, a national uh, organization um, called Asian American Cancer Support Network. I did try to reach them. I emailed them. I haven't heard, but anyway, that's another sort of uh, resource. Okay, <laughs> some of you might be feeling like this right now, right? <laughs> After all of this. But um, let's put a little, bring a little perspective on this topic, okay? So this is a uh, table from a study. It was basically a compilation of um, lung cancers uh, out of seven registries in the U.S. Um, over a five-year period, five year period of time. So there are 9,650 female non-smoker cancers during this period of time, okay? 351 were in the Asian American, Native, Hawaiian, <laughs> Pacific Islander group. So what's that? So 3.6% of all the non-smoker female lung cancers. Okay. So it's not an epidemic. But it is significant, something we have to pay attention to, I think. All right, let's get a little follow up. So, if that 59 year old got the lung cancer, she had a right upper lobe resection for stage one non small cell lung cancer. It was considered <coughs> curative by the surgeon and oncologist. She got tested for uh, the biomarkers and was positive for EGFR. Good news. She started on uh, targeted therapy. Tegrisso, which is a very expensive tyrosine kinase inhibitor. <laughs> she's doing very well at 18 months. She's giving a lecture to a pamphlet of students right now. <laughs> so today's goals, I hope we've reached this. We have an overview of lung cancer. Uh, we focus on lung cancer in non-smokers, right? And then the more important thing is to focus on the female Asian non-smokers. And then we had talked a little bit about biogenetics and then diagnosis and treatment. We talked a bit about research and resources.
So my last word for you guys is since you guys are future physicians, caretakers, you also have friends and family that are in this group, right? My hope is that you're more aware, take this awareness and take this knowledge, share with your friends, your family, your loved ones. Participate in research if you can, encourage them to do that, so that in the future we'll have a vastly improved detection, treatment, and cure and survival of Asian American non smoker female like me. Thank you.